The new Canon 10x20IS, and in particular the 8x20IS, are being marketed as the world's lightest binoculars with image stabilization. Small, lightweight binoculars with a shake-free, steady image, the standout features do sound great. But what's the full story behind them, and is there something that they're not telling you? In this video, we're going to take a closer look at them and decide whether you should indeed go and buy yourself a pair, or perhaps are you better sticking off with a standard pair of compacts or even a mid-sized binocular? And we're going to start right now. Canon recently added two new compact models to their ever-growing and for the most part excellent and ever-improving lineup of image stabilization binoculars. Incorporating very small 20mm lenses, these two new models come with either a moderate 8x or a more powerful 10x magnification. With much of the technology trickling down from their cameras, there's no denying that Canon IS binoculars are amongst the best in this niche and certainly the most popular image stabilized binoculars currently on the market. However, no matter how good Canon's optical image stabilizer is, these very specialized instruments do have their particular drawbacks, which means that whilst a good choice for some, they will not be the right choice for everyone. Also, when it comes to these two new 20mm models, I do wonder, does combining image stabilization with relatively low magnifications and such small lenses make sense? And do we actually need them? So in this video, I'm going to take a look at the main advantages as well as the disadvantages to the Canon IS binoculars in general. And then we will also take a look at how these main traits filter down into the new, uh, more compact versions. In this way, we will be able to ascertain which type of uses and therefore specifically which type of users these new binoculars are ideally suited towards. So do stick around because by the end you will know whether you should go out and get yourself a pair or perhaps should you rather go for one of the larger model um, Canon IS binoculars models or indeed should you be sticking with a standard pair of compacts or mid-size binoculars. The unique selling point and the main advantage these Canon binoculars have over just about any standard instrument is that they reduce image shake and thus potentially produce an image that is easier to view which in turn means you can potentially view more detail in the actual image itself. For observing objects over long durations, a shake-free or even a less shaky view also really helps reduce eye fatigue. And on top of this, a more steady image also means that you can opt for a higher powered binocular without the need to use a tripod. In order to accommodate the electronics, battery and the lens shift optical image stabilization system, it results in a heavier, bulkier binocular when you compare it to an equivalent optics only alternative. All this technology and electronics comes at a price, and thus Canon IS binoculars are relatively expensive when you compare them to standard binoculars using the same level of optics. Whilst they are certainly not overly flimsy, the added complexity and the inclusion of the electronics makes Canon IS binoculars generally less robust and less hardy than a well-made standard binocular. There is only one model within the Canon IS range that is fully waterproof, and a couple of others that are described for use in all weather conditions. However, take note that these 20mm versions and indeed all the other mid-size options from Canon are neither waterproof or weatherproof and thus not really suitable for use in inclement weather conditions. Just like a Canon camera or a Canon camcorder or indeed just about any electronic device from any manufacturer out there, be that your smartphone, laptop or PlayStation, the technology for electronics continues to move forward at a very fast pace and thus how long until this device becomes obsolete or outdated. In comparison, you can buy a high quality optical only binocular now and in 10 years time, perhaps even longer than that, it will almost certainly still be able to compete against the newer models in terms of optical quality and performance. So now that we have discussed the pros and cons to image stabilization binoculars in general, let's now get a little bit more specific and see how they relate to these two new compact models from Canon. The whole idea, and indeed probably the most important aspect of a compact binocular, is for them to be as small and as lightweight as possible. In their own words, the Canon 8x20 IS binoculars are the world's lightest binoculars with image stabilization. Which may be true, but how do they compare to a standard compact binocular in both their weight and dimensions? As you can see from this table, both the 8x20 and the Canon 10x20 IS are considerably bulkier than your average non-stabilized compact binocular. Also note that these total weights provided by Canon do not include batteries. 
Although, as they only use those small uh, watch type batteries, the addition to the total will be very minimal. What is also very important to note here is that all of the compact binoculars listed in this table also have larger objective lenses than the tiny 20mm ones used on these cannons, and yet they still manage to maintain a more lightweight and more compact body. Indeed, as you can also see, that whilst they do beat the average full size 42mm binocular, there are many mid sized instruments that have appreciably larger 32mm lenses that come in under the 20mm Canon IS in both weight and dimensions. So why is this important? Well, just like the windows in your house, larger lenses are able to capture and let in more light. On a binocular, this is very important as more light makes for a better quality image and an improved low light performance. So with any compact binocular, you are sacrificing some image quality and low light performance in order to have an instrument that is smaller and more lightweight than an equivalent quality mid-sized or full-size binocular. With these Canon IS 8x20 and 10x20 binoculars, you are sacrificing even more optical and low light performance than a typical compact, yet they are still about the size and weight of many mid-sized instruments. Here I also wanted to bring to your attention that the combination of a 10x magnification and the tiny 20mm objective lenses that Canon have used on the 10x20 IS um, delivers an equally tiny 2mm exapupil. This tiny shaft of light, shafts of light exiting the ocular lenses really will hamper them during low light. And thus, I would only really recommend that they be used in pretty good light conditions. For more on this, please be sure to check out my complete guide to the Exit People, which I'll link to above and down in the description below. At the time of producing this video, these binoculars had a list price of around $499 for the 8x20 IS and $549 for the 10x20 IS. However, as they have just been released, these prices will be at their highest levels and over time they will come down. This is especially true when you consider that the older Canon 8x25 IS now retails for around $345, which is about the level I expect these two new models will settle on. I feel this price is perfectly reasonable, especially when you consider the technology involved, the level of the electronics used, and indeed the very high level of optics that Canon use on them. But, and yes there always is a but, Having said that, this is still a decent chunk of change for a compact binocular, and thus you really do need to be sure that you actually need image stabilization, because for this sort of money, you could rather go out and get yourself a really excellent pair of standard compact binoculars. The amount of image shake you see when looking through a pair of binoculars is directly related to the amount the actual image is magnified by. So the higher the magnification, the more any tiny little movement gets magnified. However, whilst it is always good to get a more stable and a more steady image, I found that most people who hold their binoculars correctly and nice and firmly up against their face are able to produce what I would describe as an acceptably stable image with an 8x or a 10x magnification. This is why the Canon IS series contains mostly higher powered 12x, 14 15 and even 18x models, as this is where the image stabilization is really needed the most, and is where its positive influence begins to outweigh the negative aspects that we've already spoken about. However, having said that, it is always nice to get a more steady image with less image shake in it. So if you can achieve that with an 8 or 10 times magnification, then why not? Well, that will largely depend on your personal preferences and specific needs. So should you go out and buy yourself a Canon 8x20 or 10x20 IS binocular? I would say yes, but only if the following conditions are all true. Firstly, if you have particularly unsteady or shaky hands, or if you absolutely must have a steady image as possible, and can't or don't want to use a tripod. Secondly, if you are not planning to use your binoculars in poor light conditions or in wet weather. And thirdly, you need your image stabilization binocular to be as small and lightweight as possible and are not concerned with low light ability. Alternatively, I would say that you are rather better off getting one of the larger versions of the Canon IS binoculars if these following conditions are true. Firstly, you feel that you simply must have image stabilization on your binoculars. Secondly, you value a higher image quality, brightness and better low light performance over having the smallest and lightest image stabilized binocular currently on the market. Thirdly, you want a higher magnification than an 8 or 10 times binocular. And lastly, you want your stabilized binocular to be waterproof or at least weatherproof. And lastly, 
I would say that you would be better off if you rather bought yourself a standard pair of compact binoculars if these following conditions are true. Firstly, you want your compact binocular to deliver a better low light performance than what an 8x20 or a 10x20 configuration can produce. Second, you want a compact binocular that is actually compact and lightweight. Thirdly, achieving a super steady view is not an absolute priority, or if you'd rather just use a tripod to achieve it when needed. And lastly, you need your binoculars to be more robust, hard wearing and waterproof than the 20mm Canon IS binoculars. So there you have it. I do hope this video helps clear a few things up and makes your decision that much easier. If you did like this video, I'd really appreciate a thumbs up. And if you could, please do subscribe to this channel. These are things that really do help and allow me to bring you more and more content in the future. So anyway, having said that, thanks very much for watching and I'll see you again next time. Cheers for now.